What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Reggie Casual. Now, before we get this thing started, be sure to check us out next week at the time of this video. It is casual week. We got a whole bunch of stuff on the horizon, so you have a chance to win some Japanese fashion stuffs as well. We're gonna have giveaways next week, so stay tuned for that. Also, we got a whole lot of other stuff opening up, new shows, all that, so stay locked in. But today, oh, today, we got a final list type episode, all right? So they're gonna kind of change in their format. This is kind of boring. Just keep on talking about lists. Anyway, this list is the Japanese designers that you should know about. So we're gonna emit all of those street designers. So no Nigo, no Skate Thing, no Hiroshi Fujiwara on this one. We'll leave that for another time when we talk about something else. These are the legendary Japanese designers that you must know if you love fashion. Just to get you started, you need to know these people so you can move forward in this in this whole fashion thing because they're just as important as anybody. Anyway, let's get it. All right, so we're gonna start this off with the young one. Like, well, relatively young. He's younger, there's a lot of older people on this list. Anyway, Jun Takahashi is one of the most important designers out of Japan today. Jun started his label Undercover in 1993 as a conduit for his muse, that being punk, its music and lifestyle. This is a dude who was in a band called the Tokyo Sex Pistols. So take with that what you will. He was coaxed into designing by Rei Kabakubo of Comme des Garçons. We get to her later, but he was also inspired by Vivian Westwood and Margiela. June explores design so deeply that he often takes his inspiration literally from like collection to collection. His older work showcases his tireless, often grueling methods of creation, while his recent works takes a lot of inspiration from a variety of sources. Places like movies, like Clockwork Orange, or recently Throne of Blood. But no matter how you swing it, June's card in the pantheon of Japanese fashion designers has been set, and you owe it to yourself to know his work. Next up, we got Kansai Yamamoto. Not Yoji Yamamoto, Kansai Yamamoto. This dude's influence reverberates throughout Japan, even today. His often ostentatious takes on kimono, based on the Japanese concept of basara, have inspired generation after generation of kimono designers throughout Japan and beyond. While Kansai ended his forays in fashion in 1992, you can still see Osu's influence and ideas among some of Japan's current heavy hitters like Mihara Yasuhiro and Masayuki Ino of Doublet. Next up, uh, even today, many people don't know that Junya Watanabe isn't necessarily an independent designer. He actually designs under the Comme des Garçons banner. That's right, he, he does. But don't let that fool you. Junya is plenty strong enough to stand on his own and has garnered a fervent following. Junius showcases a mastery of fabric, texture, and technique that are practically unrivaled by anybody. One close look at his collections and you'll be floored by the amount of details. Basically, if you still want to wear something that's regular, go with Junior Watanabe's stuff. That is if you can afford it, because I'm so, it don't come cheap. It ain't. <laughs> I mean, it's good to look at, but it's wildly expensive but it's also great. It's timeless stuff, but it is expensive. Talk about expensive, Kenzo Takada. You know, you know the label Kenzo, right? That Kenzo. And it doesn't take a genius to understand why Kenzo Takada is on this list. Kenzo is not only one of the few Japanese designers known for his extravagant displays during his shows, but his design bravado is well documented. Kenzo is also considered to be one of the most influential Japanese designers of all time. However, he sold the rights to Kenzo, the label, to luxury conglomerate LVMH. That's Louis Vuitton, one of the few Japanese-esque labels under its roof. I say esque, like Japanese-esque, because Kenzo is now a naturalized French citizen. So, ah, bon appetit. <laughs> that was terrible. Issei Miyake, he's one of the legends. You know this guy, the man who reinvented the pleat. Well. Maybe not entirely reinvented it, but he created a process that used a heat press to keep the shape of the pleats on the fabrics, like memory foam. Meaning you could wash his pleats pieces a plethora of times and they would still be perfect. Also, my P game is phenomenal. You see what I did there? That was, that was dope. Miyake became so well known for pleats that it became his calling card. They literally have a sub-label of Issei Miyake called Pleats Please. And that's cool considering he doesn't design for his namesake label anymore. Fun fact, it was Issei Miyake that designed Steve Jobs' perfect little turtleneck. So the man went ahead and made a whole damn wardrobe filled with turtlenecks because Issei Miyake designed them so well. But 
It's Issei, so it's, it's cool, but that's why you should know who he is. Now I know this is the moment you've all been waiting for. You've been waiting for this one. You may even have a smirk on your face at the moment. Yes, of course, Yoji Yamamoto. Most of us are familiar with the work of Yoji, but that doesn't make it any less influential. Yoji's ode to minimalism with a focus on silhouette, frame, movement, and traditional Japanese design mixed with contemporary European elements and methods is something of a marvel to look at on the runway, the billowy silhouettes that grace the runway have an elegant nature to them that mesmerizes the soul. It's deep in there. It's like fashion soul food. And you may not understand that if you've never had soul food before, but I know you get it. If Yoji is also, he designs mostly in black. So fashion soul food, make that connection. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Yoji's consistency could be considered borderline boring to the novice, but there are very few designers that truly ask you to appreciate the art of design as much as he does. His designs actually compel you to think and be objective about fashion. And Yoji himself, when he does an interview, is quick to point out his distaste with this new fashion era, one that lacks courage in lieu of conforming to what may sell. But that's that's Yoji, that's just how he talks. Now I gotta admit something to you. When making this episode, I had to be honest with myself. Who is more influential, Reikabakubo or Yoji Yamamoto? And I love Yoji. And Yoji's style and influence can be seen everywhere in Japan, today. But Reikabakubo has had such an impact on fashion in Japan that denying her position as the most important Japanese designer of all time would be the biggest understatement I could ever make. There will never be another Rei. The brainchild of Conde Garçon, Kabukubo is all things punk Japan. And as punk is the most prevalent subculture in Japan, nearly all roads run through her entire label. There isn't a thing Kom doesn't touch. It's like if Yoji forces you to think internally, then Rei is more like she's absolutely going to smack you and your mama in the face, not care how you feel, and then ask you, what was the meaning of all of that? Kabakubo was the one who forced Takahashi to design, gave a platform to Watanabe and Ganryu. She mentored both Junichiro Abe and Chitose Abe, who got married while working for her as a pattern maker. And don't let that Met Gala one-off fool you. This is a woman who is beyond just fashion avant-garde. She's one of the greatest artists of our time and we should treat her as such. I, I know I'm gassing her up, but she's that important. Not to mention she and her husband Adrian built a $200 million plus company in Dover Street Market. So there's that, there's that. Comb is one of the most successful Japanese designer houses of all time, so. However, there are so many not mentioned in this episode that it's a bit unfair to say that these are the only ones. Like, you should know about the playful eccentricity of Chisato Tsumori, or the former head designer of Issey Miyake, Yoshiyuki Miyamae, or Junko Shimada, who's known for her pieces being worn by Lady Gaga. And of course, you can't forget Tadashi Shoji, who's just absolutely peerless as a women's designer. There are so many that I'm gonna ask you to name some. Like, I know some of you will be like, Takohiro Miyashita. Like, you can say his name. There are a lot more than just him. You can say Ato Matsumoto. There's, there's a lot of people. So you can name them in the comments or just comment on your favorites that you heard on this list and say what you like about them in the comments below. Do all of that. And remember, this is the last video. Well, this is the last list type video before casual week. So you're gonna be able to win some stuff. Memberships are gonna open. Our merch for the channel is gonna open up. So you're gonna get a handful of stuff next week. So keep it locked, keep it locked. Also give a thumbs up if you like this video. Follow on Instagram for the latest out of Japan and beyond. But most importantly, again, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And now, Japanese lesson time. All right, so today we're gonna cover Japanese pronunciation because pronunciation is very, very important. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about words that you know how to say in English that are Japanese words that change in Japanese. For example, um, Tokyo, right? Tokyo, we say Tokyo in English, but they don't say Tokyo, right? They say Tokyo, Tokyo. See that difference? Tokyo, Tokyo, right? It's a little bit longer. Tokyo, Tokyo. There it is, Tokyo. You might know the English word, like the car company, Honda. Oh, they don't know what Honda is. Nobody knows what a Honda is in Japan. You say Honda, it's H-O-N-D-A, so Honda. Right? If you see H-O, 
it literally, it literally is ho, right? <laughs> right. So if you see H O, it's literally ho. So ho n da, right? So Honda. Uh, we had a name this episode. Ise miyake. Um, in English, a lot of people say ise miyaki. Ise miyake, miyake, miyake. So ise miyake. Uh, the, the, the liquor drink, sake. We say sake in English. Uh, sake is actually a t completely different word. It's not the drink, rice wine. Uh, that would be in Japanese, sake. Okay, sake, like ise miyake, sake, ise miyake, sake. And then finally, uh, we have the weird one, uh, anime, anime, anime. We say anime in English, anime in Japanese, uh, which is weird because Anime comes from the English word animation, which is the reason why a lot of English people just say it's anime. It's it's anime, right? Because anime is uh, an abbreviation of animation. So that's right. An anime is not a made up word. It's it's a, just a truncated version of animation. 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 So yes, it's it's actually an English word, which is great. So. Uh, Get that, take that with, use that. Anyway, that's your Japanese lesson for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you, I can't even, I can't even, I don't even have a good Jap English pronunciation. Whatever. Anyway, that's it. See you guys in a minute.